Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm finding myself mad, sad, and excited in in different measures. I'm kind of, you know, it's, the state of the world is outrageous. The fact that we're talking about a billion people living such vulnerable lives, and is 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 something to be angry about. And as many have said, we we need to channel that anger into constructive operationalization, not just not throw stones or shout. Um, although shouting sometimes helps. I, I'm I, I'm also sad. I mean, I think colleague, thank you. Um, Sheila David for bringing such a diversity of voices and hearing from colleagues in in Palestine and Sudan and Yemen in, in the most extraordinary challenging circumstances. Um, it's it's hard to hear, but it's it's good to hear because it keeps us real, right? As you say. But I'm also really excited. I, I just listened to the quality of leadership on this call. You know, I I, I hear a lot of big hearts. You know, people really pouring your your life force into trying to improve the lives of your of the global community, but at whatever level you're operating at. Um, also, a lot of big minds, a lot of smart thinking, but also openness, which I think is the real sign of intelligence to learn from others, um, and 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 a massive dose of pragmatism. I don't think I don't think anyone on this on this call is going to get away with reveries of abstract solutions because there's so much pragmatism here. The the, the 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 champions can help in a couple of very specific ways. Um, and and Sheila, you have my word that I, although my formal role as champion ends at, at COP27, I'll, I'll I'll continue to to champion roof over our heads as long as I can. Um, the champions can't really do much, right? We have but we have a big mandate and a platform that will allow us to elevate issues and campaigns, and that's what we're trying to do here. And several of you mentioned. Let's use the climate lens and the climate resilience lens to elevate, which is a much bigger issue. This is not just about climate. This issue is about injustice. It's about power structures. It's about access to finance. Um, but the climate resilience lens can be a great vector for more attention and, 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 and more solutions. The other thing which the champions can do is really encourage boldness. Sheila, I remember the first time we met, I think it was on the advisory group of the uh, Centre for Urban Transitions. And... Um, you, you were you were your normal um, articulate self in saying, I hope this isn't going to be a, work, uh, a talking show. And I had this epiphany when you were talking that we, we just need to be very clear that we need to uh, address inform informality, but we need to we need to aim to solve entirely, not, not just 10 percent, but we need to end. And so I think that I, I love the boldness of roof over our heads. Um, uh, and I think. We have a real opportunity with the next two cops being in Africa and Amir, and it's great to have you here. You know, the Egyptian presidency is really focusing on resilience, um, finance, climate as a, as a fundamental economic development issue. And that we have to, as several have said, solve for climate resilient development, not just mit climate mitigation or climate resilience. Um, I think as, as an umbrella campaign, we, we what we're aiming to foster here is what we call radical collaboration and 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 that doesn't seek to drive uniformity and force everybody into a roof overhead box it's about elevating the amazing work that you're already doing recognizing the the kind of sovereignty of many of these issues but also finding ways to make the whole much greater than the the sum of the parts you're all already in the campaign <laughs> because we right um the question is how can we be smarter about that collaboration um and, and just a couple of thoughts having been involved in lots of collaborative initiatives and in fact we're, we're going to be with adam kahane from rios partners who's done a lot of amazing collaborative work in very difficult situations often post-conflict around the world we're just about to publish a small book on collaboration what one first thing to avoid is what freud calls the narcissism of small differences Right, movements or collaborative campaigns often fall apart because people argue about their minor differences instead of focusing on the huge challenge ahead of us. There's a famous scene in the Monty Python film, The Life of Brian, which comically illustrates that. So let's let's enjoy our differences and enjoy learning from each other. And let's let's have the confidence that there's actually a lot more of us working on this issue than any one organization to be re really bold. Um, final thought. Sheila is I don't think we should be shy about the fact that of course actually this is a political campaign I don't mean it's a campaign to run for office is what we normally mean but it is a campaign which is seeking to reconfigure the patterns of power and injustice and the distribution of attention 
and, and money. And so as all political campaigns, the narrative really matters. Which is why I love Sheila, from the very moment you mentioned the, your idea for the name of the title, it's the right title for a campaign because it's immediately obvious what we're talking about. Um, not in detail, but anybody can understand what a roof over our head means. And it immediately talks to a basic human right for decent shelter. Um, I think that um, it's also really important, and I hear real sophistication from everybody, that we talk to different stakeholders in the languages meaning to them. This is clearly a nexus issue of gender, health, education, um, uh, and development. And of course, the language we need to use to excite and engage city leaders is different from the language to engage um, bankers or architects or data providers or the grassroots communities. But I think we have a real opportunity between now and COP to build our collective story and have that story of the launch of the roof over our heads, of the of the need and the opportunity um, to be one of the big stories that comes out of COP27 um, and use that to launch um, a concerted effort of radical collaboration for the rest of the decade to make a difference with and for the lives of those most vulnerable in our urban environment. So Sheila and everybody here, thank you so much for all your your big hearts, your big minds and your and your pragmatic hands that you bring to this. I'm really excited to working with you all to make this a success. Thank you.